Hello campers, this is the Suburban Camper. When someone asks me what I do in my Suburban Camper, I tell them I explore, I camp, and I learn as I go. There are certainly other things I do, such as hike, fish, take pictures, etc. But the answer, explore, camp, learn, really captures the essence of suburban camping. After reflecting on my answer, I realized I learn a great deal every time I go out on a camping trip. So, I decided to capture everything I learned on a recent three-night, 600-plus mile camping trip and to share all of it in this video. Remember, I will also be sharing a campsite location in this video, so be on the lookout for a quick slide with a picture, three-word description, and the coordinates. All right, let's go. 65 degrees on November 3rd is quite nice. 50 degrees 15 minutes later after climbing up into the mountains is still quite nice. It is a great feeling when you spend time researching and identifying a dispersed campsite, and when you arrive, it is everything you hoped it would be. But sometimes, if you drive a little further, you will find an even better campsite with a picture window view. My 12-year-old Aussie has been sluggish at home, so it makes me happy to see Zoe so energized while camping. I need to add an extra chuck -it ball to my checklist, as I think we left this one behind. When you're in a forest, you can hear wind coming. This survivor tree is a great silhouette for this sunset. A reheated cheeseburger is almost as good as a fresh one. The doghouse makes the best cheeseburger in Central Oregon. A hanging daub kit is perfect for camping. When you camp alone, deodorant is optional. Work gloves are great for camping. And photography? I was obsessed with this tree. I always enjoy seeing wildlife. Elk are good at hiding. I spotted this herd ahead on the left, and they also spotted me. I stopped the vehicle, turned on my roof camera, along with my video camera, and proceeded slowly up the road. Where did they go? I know they did not cross the road, as I was watching the whole time. They seemed to vanish. I will rewind the video, and you can see them bunched up hiding behind these trees. I drove right past them. If I had not already spotted them, I never would have seen them. I jumped out and they took off, but they kept a tight formation. If a campground is closed, the restroom may still be open. After a large cup of high-octane coffee, it is great when a restroom you thought may be closed is open. It is important to read all the information provided about road closures. Stay tuned. 15 miles per hour is my max speed on a rough washboarded road. You are very lucky when you spot something running across the road and you are not sure whether it was a coyote or a wolf, so you slow down and turn your camera on, scan along the road, don't see anything, stop, jump out, see some movement, zoom in, and find it. That pointy snout tells me it is a coyote, and a healthy one at that. In the time it took me to install this quick shelter, I can easily set up my full canopy. The best way to fold a tarp is to use two sandbags to hold one side. Beer tastes better outside. I prefer potholes to washboard because you can dodge potholes.
I will never understand why people shoot signs. The Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife has areas requiring a parking permit? This is a nice stretch of river, and I caught three fish on my first three casts, so I guess I will figure out how to get one. Google Fi has horrible service in remote areas. My Suburban is still reliable at 200,000 miles. I so wanted to get the video of it turning over to 200,000. There is an area on the high lava plains in Oregon where you can see up to five Cascade Mountain peaks. Today, I can clearly see Jefferson, Hood, and Adams. It is 106 miles from Jefferson to Adams. And if you look hard enough, there is St. Helens peeking through. Mount Adams is 12,281 feet, which is taller than Mount Hood. It stinks when you encounter a locked gate on a road you thought would take you all the way down to the River Canyon, especially when it is dark and you drove 250 plus miles to get here. It is great when you realize the flat spot in front of the gate will make a great campsite and your map says it is public land. Good night. These fry baskets help prevent swamp cooler. Bag of ice on the bottom. Basket upside down on top of the bag. Basket right side up on top of that. And my food is high and dry. Sometimes a sunset is only in front of you. Sometimes a sunset has two sides and the best view is behind you. And if you are lucky, sometimes the sunset is all around you. It was worthwhile driving 10 miles out of my way and risking a speeding ticket to capture this sunset. Even though my hitch cargo carrier has low clearance, if I don't completely tighten these bolts, it will fold up when the back end drags. Dedicating a bin to trash and keeping it outside the vehicle in the hitch cargo carrier is a smart thing to do when camping in remote areas. Avenza Maps tells me when I am on a map. Who knew? I didn't. Quad maps are great, but if you are traveling through multiple maps and don't know the layout, navigating is challenging, so I will be printing out a cheat sheet like this going forward. I am really enjoying my new motion lights. The fact they are magnetic and can be switched on and off are great features. This is a great spot to mount the inverter and connect it to this power source. And this is the perfect spot for my battery charger. Zoe prefers my bed to her sleeping spot. I kind of already knew that, but she reinforced it on this trip. Tall trees plus early morning light equal a very long shadow. It feels great to stand in front of a hot stove when cooking outside on a cold night. This is what it looks like when you accidentally get in the shot with your headlamp on. A wide angle lens enhances clouds. Even though I'm colorblind, I appreciate fall colors. Always have a rag handy to wipe off the camera lens. If you take the time to write down directions, follow them. Supposed to go right here, but I went straight. I always appreciate paved forest roads. I am glad fire season is over and they are working on thinning the forest. That pile will make a nice bonfire. FS 38 in the Ochoco National Forest is a nice road. Spoke too soon. FS 38 is a horrible road. 
If you do not know the road is passable, it is best to walk to figure it out. It was FS5810 in the Ochoco National Forest is a great road. Smooth as butter. I did not need anything in my camping gear bin, and I rarely do, so I'm going to move all this gear to my Pelican box so I can put it up top, forget about it, and free up space inside. I'm still reluctant to not carry this stuff, as I'm afraid if I don't bring it, there will be something in here that will get me out of a jam. Since most of my trips are three to five nights, it makes sense to combine my food and beverage bin. Rain guards are great as they allow me to keep the windows cracked open, but keep in mind a roof cargo carrier collects a lot of water and if it hangs over the side, it can overwhelm the rain guard's ability to channel water away and when the door is open, it will drip water inside. Wet weather means no dust on gravel roads. I will never get the same joy from sticking my head out the window as Zoe does. I believe I crossed about 82 cattle guards on this trip. I always appreciate getting back on nice pavement. I love how these lanterns work. After not utilizing a flush toilet for a few days, the restrooms at Cottonwood Canyon State Park are a welcome sight. And finally, if I need to vacate a campsite quickly, I can do it in about five minutes. Remember the road closure sign? Well, I only read, roads shown in green on the map are open and the map showed the road I was taking to my campsite was green. Having just seen either a coyote or a wolf, I was not sure at that point, as I had not seen the video, I focused my attention on the report wolves information, rather than the rest of the details about road closures, and I grabbed one of the brochures and proceeded on my way. I made it to my campsite via this road, which was just a track, and enjoyed a beautiful evening and a nice cold night. At about 7.30 a.m., right before sunrise, a hunter walked down the road, passed my campsite, mumbled something, and headed into the woods. I thought to myself, why did he walk here, when he could have driven like I did? And I wondered what he said. Then, I read all the info in the brochure and realized all roads not in green are closed. The main road I took was green, but the track I took to this campsite was not. So, I learned how road closures work during hunting season, and I learned how quickly I can vacate a campsite. And I think I also figured out what the hunter said. What an idiot. Please check for road closures before you travel to this campsite. There you have it, the 65 things I learned on this camping trip. I told you I learned a lot. If you learned something, please subscribe. Thank you very much.